Hello everyone. Myself, I am Uma, and I have overall eight plus years of IT experience as a data analyst and four years of experience as a corporate trainer. I am a Microsoft certified data analyst and a corporate trainer, and currently working at Microsoft. Hello everyone. Welcome to KSR Data Vision YouTube channel. In today's session, uh, we will understand what exactly is this incremental refresh. Okay, so this is my database. And here I am taking one table. This is order table. So if you see the data, right, this is how it looks. We do have order information, shipment information, and some other details. Okay, the products, how much is the sales quantity, all this data we do have. This is my database, and this is my table, fact order table. So uh, in order to understand this incremental refresh, uh, let's see first the data. Okay, how many years of data we do have here? I'll execute this query. If you see the first transaction date, it is 2016. It is starting from January month and 2019 December is the last transaction date and year. OK, so this is about our data. And so let's understand what exactly is this incremental refresh. If you see here. We do have this order table, right? The table we do have. So when you normally schedule a refresh, what will happen? Imagine for now you don't have this uh, highlighted box, which is in red color. So when you schedule the refresh, what will happen? The complete data set. This is there, right? This will get completely refreshed. If you have 10 years of data or five years of data, like complete total years, like 10 years means the 10 years of data completely, it will get refreshed. But if your changes are only for 30 days or one year, only this data, if you want to update in that case, you will not go with this full refresh. Rather, you will go with this incremental refresh. So in this refresh, what will happen is when you schedule the refresh, actually you have to do this configuration. Once you do the incremental configuration in the Power BI desktop, it will split actually the historical data as well as the new updates. Means how exactly you want that uh, updates for 30 days or one week or 10 days. So it will split that and then this combinedly this partition, it will be created as a data set in the Power BI service. So only the recent updates last 30 days or um, one month, two months data you want to update, then you can go with incremental refresh. So because of this, what will happen? The refreshes will be faster and it is more reliable. OK, so now quickly let's jump into the practical session. So we have seen this is our table, the first transaction and last transaction. So in order to apply this refresh, we should have one date column also. And the, uh, so here this is the date column order date we are considering and we came to know about the dates here. So now let's go to this Power BI and let's load the data. OK, get data from SQL Server. So give the server details here. This is my server name and database name is Amazon DB. So here you do have two options. OK, when while you are connecting to this database, you do get two options import mode and direct query mode. This is also an important interview question. What is the difference between import and direct query mode? Import mode um, is nothing but you are getting the complete data set into the Power BI internal storage. And it supports all the transformations. You can create all the measures, uh, DAX, everything you can do, all the transformations you can do. Only limitation is uh, the data set cannot be more than 1 GB. That is the limitation. Whereas coming to the direct query mode, it is like you are uh, not creating uh, the copy of the data into the Power BI internal storage. Rather, you are just establishing the connection to the database. So, um, Performance wise, this will be slower and even the transformations are limited and DAX is also limited. You cannot create all the measures, everything in direct query mode. The only advantage is you can work with unlimited data. Uh, there is no restriction on the volume of the data. So that is the advantage of direct query. And here in this incremental refresh, uh, the limitation is you have to use only import mode. This cannot uh, work with direct query mode. OK, 
So please note down this point that incremental refresh works with only import data connectivity mode. So let's connect this. So in this, this is my table which I want to import. So I'm selecting this order table and loading this table. Okay, we have loaded this table and uh, let's create one visual now. Let me take one line chart. So let me expand this. I will just take, okay, this is just for publishing. So I'll take order date. I'll only take year wise. What is the sales? Okay. And in secondary axis, I'll take the profit. I'll turn on this data labels. Okay. This is just one visual I'm adding here. And now let's see how we can implement this incremental refresh. So first select, uh, let's go to this transform data okay in power query editor we will be uh, creating this so let's go to transform data and here you can see this right manage parameters go to this manage parameters and create new parameters okay this is mandatory step you have to create two parameters this is mandatory step so that parameters also range start and range end so you have to use same same like this only range start so type can be anything. No, it can be, it should be date or time and suggested values will be anything and current value I'll give. Uh, so we have already seen, right? What is the start date and end date? So I will just take only one year of data. Okay, 2019, Jan to December, I will take. So I'll mention this as 1-1-2019. Since we have taken this as date or time, right? So I'll give this as 0-0. Zero, zero. Okay, this is range start parameters. Two parameters we need to create. So I'm creating range start. Okay, and one more also I'll create. One more it is range end. So here also I'm taking same date or time. The value will be December 2019. Okay, so two parameters I have already created now. Now what I will do, I'll go to this table and here in this order date, if you see, in date or time filter, uh, date or time filters, you can see here custom filter. So I am selecting that. So here you can select this parameter, and here also you can select the parameter. So in parameter, what I am giving is after or equal to the start date. So start date, range start. We have already set the two parameters, range start and range end. So for this after is after or equal to range start and here you will be selecting range end so less than the range end it should be right so is before or equal to so what exactly this one is like in between the start end and uh, start and end i am taking the values for that i am writing like this is after or equal to start date and is before or equal to this end date so once this is done okay click on okay so this is done now so what exactly we did we defined the filter parameters and we have used those parameters to apply the filter okay this is done now go here close and apply so this is done now so the filters has been applied now what will happen you can go to this uh, table here you can see incremental refresh so click on this incremental refresh and here you have to see here it is telling that refresh large tables faster with incremental refresh plus get the latest data in real time so you turn on this one set important refresh ranges you turn on this then this is the important step okay you, this is the main configuration you are doing so here i have told you right how this works so it will split the partition like historical and the new update so based on what the values you give that it will configure like this so this is the step which you are performing here so here you can select archive data starting so you can enter uh, like how many years of data you want so i can select here four years in that incremental refresh uh, date like past 30 days you want or past one week however you want so i will enter this as 30 
and I will select this as dates because this depends okay based on your project requirement like if they want to have this five years of data and the refresh should be for every 10 days or something like that based on your project requirement this values you can change accordingly and you have some more optional settings to use so this you can select okay these are optional but still if you want to see only the latest data in real time with the direct query you can select this one and only when the refresh is completed you want that option to be selected you can select this accordingly since it is optional now i am not selecting anything and um, finally see this is how uh, it is understanding okay four years before refresh date archived and 30 days before refresh date this is the refresh date and you can click on apply okay so once this part is done that configuration part is done what you will do you will go here and publish this one publish the save the changes okay i am saving this one and i am publishing this to my uh, workspace okay in this workspace also you should have uh, the premium access actually so i am selecting this workspace and select this one got it so now if you go to this workspace this is the major project so just now I have published this to the workspace. Now you can see that the report and the data set is published here. So as usual, how to schedule the refresh, you have to go here and you have to select the gateway. So this is the gateway and here you have to configure that. So from where my data is coming from, this is the source, right? Add to the gateway. So in authentication, I am selecting basic. I'm select I'm giving the skip test connection. As of now, it's okay. Data source name I will give Amazon DB source. Okay, Amazon DB I'll give. And then I am creating this. So now here you can set up this one. Okay, so this is running. Now I have to map this to the one which I have created. So Amazon DB. Okay, credentials. Yeah, this you can ignore. I am giving here apply. Credentials you can ignore for now. And this you can turn on. Turn on and you can set here like how you want daily or weekly. This you can set. And here you can enter the details and click on apply. This is how you can refresh the incremental refresh. So once it is done, automatically this incremental refresh, how it will work for normal refresh like that it will work. The only difference, as I said, historical data and the new updates based on the configuration which we provided in the Power BI desktop. Based on that, it will split and then the complete one will be there in the data set. So this will be helpful for us when we want to uh, improve the refresh faster and uh, more reliable and only a particular set of data like past uh, three months data or one year of data. We want to do the refresh when we have a data set with more than 10 years or 12 years, all the historical data. This concept will be helpful. Hope this is useful to you and for more informative videos, please do like, share and subscribe to KSR Data Vision YouTube channel. Thank you.